I think that the um, advantage of having a biomedical engineering undergraduate degree is that it is, number one, distinct from other engineering majors. It addresses a societal need for having students that have strong engineering fundamentals that are necessary for the field, but then an ability to understand how those principles apply in mechanical settings, electrical settings, chemical settings that might be part of a biomedical problem. And so their experiences are applicable to a variety of problems that industry would be interested in. I think what they can expect is very dedicated faculty, hands-on experiences, a range of problems that they might encounter later in life in their jobs they're going to be exposed to here. We have a new curriculum which has permitted us to look at other curricula around the country, uh, take advantage of what we have specialized here at Virginia Tech, but then also where we see might be you know, not as prevalent in other programs across the country. There's a lot of unique elements in our curriculum in order to really develop leaders in biomedical engineering. A lot of the elements and skill sets are developed during the curriculum by looking at the FDA and looking at medical devices themselves and breaking them down and understanding the design of them and how to build new innovative approaches. Uh, students who are interested in pursuing a career path in any type of healthcare industry, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's designing, all these types of processes they'll be exposed to during their time here at Virginia Tech. In our biomedical class on the second day, they set us down with a medical device and said, take it apart and tell me what it does. And that was exciting because you've been told, hey, don't take that apart, or hey, put that back together, please. But for once, I'm in a major that allows me to take things apart and not get in trouble for it. And I've absolutely enjoyed that. I'm really excited to watch the program grow with the new medical school here at Virginia Tech as well as the initiatives in a global community and global learning. These aspects we can build into our curriculum and really give unique opportunities to students that they can't get anywhere else. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, we're very happy for you to be joining us for the Biomedical Engineering Information Session um, at Virginia Tech. I'm Jennifer Wayne. I'm a professor and department head of biomedical engineering and mechanics. And joining me is Amanda Sandridge, who is Beam's undergraduate academic advisor. In starting out, we want to talk a little bit about what is biomedical engineering in case you had questions. Uh, overall, applying engineering analysis and designing um, devices and algorithms for medical applications are necessary in order to improve the quality of life. And that's really what biomedical engineers do as a profession. This might be associated with any of the systems within the body, cardiovascular, as you see, um, an EKG, or in heart valves, artificial skin, and those are all things that are signs within the body or going into the body. But biomedical engineers also work on instrumentation and um, devices that might be used in the clinic or in the OR. It could be EKG machines, it could be ultrasound, MRI, all of those constitute what a biomedical engineer could very well do designing prostheses, both external and internal. So really the wealth of experiences that you get with an engineering undergraduate degree um, permit you to impact the delivery of healthcare. Here at Virginia Tech, biomedical engineering draws on the strengths of our college or university as well as the faculty within the department. Um, we have expertise in several key areas of biomedical engineering um, that are research areas, but that also gets infused into the undergraduate and the graduate curriculum. For example, biomechanics, translational cancer research, biomedical imaging, neuroengineering, cardiovascular engineering, and biomaterials, tissue engineering, regenerative medicine. 
And these are all listed because not only do they get infused into the curriculum, they also present opportunities for undergraduates to participate in research while they are going through their degree. Talking a little bit about many of those areas, let's first look at biomechanics. Uh, when we think about biomechanics, this is really looking at the analysis and also the research of the mechanics of li living organisms um, and the application of engineering principles to biological systems. This covers a wide range of um, activities that might happen within the body or with the whole body. For example, locomotion analysis, uh, doing gait analysis, movement analysis, and this can be for sports for injuries um, in order to understand how the body changes um, its motion or its behavior as it accommodates different uh, scenarios, whether that's injury, health, or in sports performance. Biomechanics also includes things such as impact and injury analysis um, and what changes in the body do to those. But if we look internal, Biomechanics is very prevalent in all the systems within the body. It could be cardiovascular, looking at blood flow, or how the heart functions and pumps. Um, it could be musculoskeletal. Obviously, the muscles and the bones are very important to, to locomotion, but how are they particularly functioning? How are the joints functioning? That all impacts um, how the body responds and would be an area of biomechanics. We can get down to even a smaller level in looking at biological molecular modeling, going down to not only the tissues, but going down to the cells and at the nano level would be an area that biomechanics would impact. We here at Virginia Tech and in BEAM have the Center for Injury Biomechanics, which many of you perhaps already know about. Um, there we have impact and injury analysis, computational modeling, sports injury biomechanics, military injury from blast, as well as vehicular crash-related incidents. And you can see a variety of pictures here that represent what each one of those areas might be doing, both in terms of experimental work as well as modeling. And then, of course, Virginia Tech is very well known for our helmet rating system, the STAR system, um, in which we are looking at helmets of all sorts, football helmets, um, bicycle helmets, um, both for professional, college, as well as K-12 um, sports activities, and how those helmets do their job in protecting the subject's head from injury. We have a very large group that's active in translational cancer research. And here, when we're talking about translational cancer research, it's uh, really a field that's building on our beams, existing strengths, but it also pulls from a variety of disciplines that could be fluid mechanics, biomechanics, biomaterials, biochemistry, and more. Uh, for example, in focused ultrasound and how that might be used to impact the growth or arrest the growth of a cancerous tumor. Translational work is uh, one in which you start out with basic research inventions, those get translated into in vivo models, then promising results go to clinical trials, and ultimately the idea is those lead to improved health. And that's exactly what our team in translational cancer research is doing. Of course, that improved health informs basic research and more inventions, and so it's really a very continuous process, but we have made some ex excellent strides there. Biomedical imaging is also another important area where biomedical engineers can be involved. Here are just a couple of examples um, where in this aspect of BME, you're using physical principles to understand how an imaging modality, for example, x-ray, MRI, ultrasound, how they interact with the tissues in the body and thus are able to provide information of what is actually happening inside the body. Vascular engineering, where uh, we work to improve the basic scientific understanding of the mechanisms of cardiovascular disease, as well as promoting innovation, innovative technologies uh, for diagnosis and treatment. Um, that can be at the mechanical level um, of the whole heart and how it impacts 
the EKG, but it also can go all the way down to the cellular level where you're actually looking at how cells are communicating with one another, gap junctions, and how those actually lead to arrhythmias or abnormalities and thus need to be understood in order to provide treatment applications. Materials and tissue engineering is also another very large area. We use polymers, uh, mineral cells, and growth factors, and the idea is to regenerate tissues and organs at some level. Um, and you can see how we need to grow um, tissues or cells within an in vitro system. Um, and we take various materials in order to grow those cells into system systems that hopefully ultimately replicate what the human body would create on its own. So biomedical engineering here at Virginia Tech is really very exciting. Um, it's a wonderful field for students to get involved with because the opportunities are really endless. Here are two URLs for you to explore in depth the exciting work that's taking place um, here in Blacksburg. Uh, we have links to both videos as well as to our faculty and research pages, so I hope that you take advantage of taking a look at those. So now we're going to transition to looking specifically at the undergraduate curricula um, for biomedical engineering students here at Virginia Tech, and Amanda will take over. We have a newly approved undergraduate degree. Um, we have a major and minor in biomedical engineering. Students also have the opportunity to do an accelerated BS MS program, which I'll talk about a little bit later. We have a PhD program and also a DBM PhD program. Currently our enrollment in the undergraduate degree is 40 BS students. Our PhD program has 140 students and we have 20 master's students. Our undergraduate degree was approved by the state of Virginia in the fall of 2018. It's 124 credit hours. Our first cohort of students begin in the fall of 2019. Our undergraduate degree is different from many other degree programs in that it is a mechanics-based degree. Ours requires statics, deep worms, and dynamics, which are the foundational courses of a lot of engineering programs. In the junior year coursework, we have two specific labs for our students. Um, these labs are only for students in the major. Um, they're not available to students outside of our degree program. And then another foundational course for students in the a mechanics based program is our fluid mechanics course. Also in the junior year is where our students begin taking technical electives, which are where they begin to specialize in the areas that they're interested in. So in the senior year, students are given the opportunity to take technical electives that will allow them to specialize in areas of their interests. Also in the senior year, students are given the opportunity to complete a two semester design sequence, which gives them the ability to showcase their knowledge in prior coursework. This project allows them to create a design project to help solve a medical problem. This is a sampling of our BMES technical electives. Our faculty have developed these coursework based upon their different specialties and the interests of our current students. Since we are a new program, our program has limited enrollment through the 21-22 academic year. Our process involves two stages, an application that includes transcripts and essays and an interview. In addition to our undergraduate degree program, we also have a BME minor program. Our minor program matches up well with all the different degree programs in the College of Engineering. It was developed in order to complement the different degree programs to allow students to add our coursework into their current degree programs. The minor program is 18 credit hours and includes the courses listed here. The six credits of BME research can be an improved senior design project that has a BME focus or six credits of undergrad research to total 18 credit hours. Our BME minor program has, currently has 192 students. We draw students from many of the different degree programs in the College of Engineering, as outlined here. We also have an accelerated program that allows students to count 12 credit hours in their senior year towards their undergraduate degree and their master's degree. 
In order to qualify for this program, student ha must have a 3.5 minimum GPA and apply in their junior year. Students must also take the GREs in order to qualify for this program. Students take 12 credit hours of 5,000 level coursework in their senior year. That double counts towards their undergraduate and graduate degree. What can be done with a BME degree? We expect that our students will go into three different areas, a third to industry, a third to government, and a third to higher education. Here are some a sampling of different areas that our students, we expect them to go into based upon where our minor students have gone so far. For more information, please visit our website, or you can also contact me. My information can be found on our website as well. So our lab primarily studies uh, focused ultrasound technologies for medical and now conservation applications. So we're developing focused ultrasound transducers and other devices as tools to really generate high amplitude sound waves at a single location in the body. So these are to develop completely non-invasive therapies for cancer and other applications. We're trying to create a machine learning algorithm that takes in ultrasound images of tendons. So if you look at these images, this is a normal tendon, and then this one's an injured tendon. And as you can see, they have physical differences. And those are things that physicians look for to determine whether they think a tendon is gonna be injured or not. So we're focused on understanding both injury prevention and then recovery, uh, mostly in the orthopedics realm, trying to understand both our young athletes as well as our older adults and how we can get them back to doing the things that they love to do. We're working on direct engagement with our clinicians and our clinical faculty to try and translate the work that we do here in the lab out into the clinic setting. So part of my fellowship is I go to a NASA center every summer for about 10 weeks. So the past two summers, I've spent time at NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. NASA is planning to send the first woman next man to the moon in 2024. And the hope is that my research can help understand and help design for human health and performance on these future surface exploration missions.